We're talking today about a fun, cute, killer kitten straight out of a prehistory storybook for kids. But before we do that, I want to bring your attention again to our channel and our publication. As you know, the print covers a variety of subjects outside of just science with a bunch of very young and very talented reporters. To continue our work and to create the impact that we do, we really appreciate support from our viewers and readers. If you like our content and our work, please do show appreciation by subscribing to the print however you would like. There is a subscription button below and it really helps support us to produce videos such as these. I also want to thank all of our loyal viewers and also show appreciation for your continued support. Now, on to the cute baby killer kitten. It has been a very exciting week in paleontology and paleosciences. An exciting discovery from ancient prehistoric world was made just about four years ago, deep in the Siberian permafrost that has been frozen for thousands of years. And now this excitement has spread to regular people because a paper has been published about it. This paper describes in great scientific detail a frozen mummified killer kitten. And this is after four years of preliminary study. This is a very significant finding because for the first time we have actual physical evidence that wild prehistoric cats survived much longer than we thought they did and also in a much wider geographic region than we thought they did. This is technically a mummy, the remains of the kitten that have been discovered. These are the fully mummified partial remains of a saber-toothed cat, a kind of a tiger but a baby. The species is called Homotherium latidens and it is a saber-toothed cat that does not exist today. The baby that has been discovered is nearly three weeks old and it's a beautiful furry little ferocious kitten. It is also so far one of the only bearded mummified kittens we have and now we have a really well-preserved remains of a prehistoric animal that has absolutely no living analogues, comparisons or descendants. So the Homotherium is a genus of prehistoric wild cat that died out several millennia ago. This is an animal that has so far only been reconstructed in art and physical depictions without direct reference, except from fossil bone remains of adult individuals that have been discovered before. And discovering the young of a species is not just exciting because humans love cute things, but also because discovering a younger individual of any dead extinct species that are not around anymore gives us tremendous insight into how the animal grows, the animal's physiology, and we can also obtain information from how the animals evolved and subsequently evolved. The mummy that has been unearthed includes fully preserved, completely frozen upper half almost of the entire body. The lion cub's remains contain the most adorable full head, one full forearm, a forelimb, full shoulders, rib cage, a hind leg and pelvic bones. Most amazingly, the whole dental system was preserved and also the external features that typically get decomposed away or removed from carcasses such as fur and hair the colors of the fur and hair, foot pads and paws that these animals have and their colors and many more such physical attributes that don't show up on bones. When scientists performed radiocarbon dating on these remains, they found that this little dead kitten is older than 30,000 years, likely up to 35,000 years. It is approximately dated to around 31,800 years old, give or take a few hundred years. So the time that this cat existed and this particular individual was alive coincides with the exact same time early prehistoric humans began drawing some of the oldest cave paintings in the world, especially in this region. What is most significant about this finding is that this is one of those rare occasions in paleontology where there is such a discovery that blows all other discoveries out of the water. This cub is extremely well preserved and it has no modern analog. We know about woolly mammoths that existed in the past and we know that they are related to modern day elephants or their analogous, they can at least be compared. 
Most other prehistoric remains we unearthed are related in some way or the other to most modern animals and they have some kind of a modern analogue, a modern comparison. Modern bears can be compared to prehistoric cave bears, they are related. Modern wolves can be compared to prehistoric dire wolves. Modern cattle such as bison can be compared to aurochs which used to exist in prehistoric times. Like that, large modern mammals, especially land mammals like horses and even rhinos, they have a comparable and related animal in prehistory which helps us understand evolution and the ecology of these animals better, how they survived. But this one is different. Saber-toothed cats are not comparable to modern-day lions and tigers. They come from different ancestors called the Machairodontinae and they are not comparable exactly, even though you and I might think, ha, ah, they look the same. This looks like a giant tiger with giant teeth. But turns out they're not. Even though we call them saber-toothed tigers or lions, they are actually an entirely different type of cat. These prehistoric saber-toothed cats also have another famous genus aside from Homotherium and this is called the Smilodon. Both Homotherium and Smilodon diverged from modern-day cats' ancestors many millions of years prior. Thus, they developed completely independently of how modern-day big cats like tigers and lions developed and evolved. Of course, these both prehistoric genus are notable for their saber tooth, their exceptionally long and sharp upper canine that protrudes from their upper lip. Technically, these teeth are called scimitar teeth because of their resemblance to the weapon. Now, back to this new homotherium whose scimitar teeth are slightly shorter than smilodon. Homotherium has also differed in its ecology, habitat and behavior from smilodon. The study managed to lay out comprehensive differences between homotherium and modern-day cats as well because we finally have a reference physiology for homotherium. Immediately upon looking at it, what becomes visible is that this little tiny cub seems to have an old man beard, tufts of hair below the jaw which we hadn't seen previously because we've never recovered a preserved carcass before. But these cats, the way they have been represented in cartoons, have been quite accurate. These cartoon reconstructions include beards and these reconstructions have been based on adult fossilized bones. The fur of this animal is dark brown with a large mouth opening, much larger than what modern cats have, even though this is just a cub. It also has a long thick neck and very small ears. Comparisons with modern day big cats show that it is indeed closer to, but very different from Smilodon, and in line with their lineage, that of Macharodontinae. One of the biggest takeaways from this discovery and this study is how long these animals survived in the past and they had survived large-scale changes to the Earth's climate over millions of years. This is the first time we have evidence that, first of all, that these animals lived so far away in the north that they had such a wide geographic range and secondly, that they survived so late into history, going back to about 26,000 years ago, when the Earth was in its previous ice age, the last glacial maximum. From this paper, we can now tell that this species is the only one that is known to have inhabited Eurasia at this time, the only saber-toothed cat. And the little baby that has been discovered shows that this species is supremely well adapted to extreme climatic conditions of the last ice age. And of course, it is extremely adorable to look at, even though it is dead and mummified. Now, these are of course preliminary findings from a mere four years of analysis with this specimen. That might sound like a lot of time, but in science, it really isn't. This carcass, this fossil, this mummy will be studied and analyzed for decades to come. In fact, the authors are already working on another paper that will describe the cub's physiology, anatomy and subsequent evolution in much greater detail. Meanwhile, the findings from this excavation has breathed a new life into the paleo art community which is both victorious in how they had guessed a homotherium individual will look like from bones and also suddenly full of creativity to draw and sketch out a very realistic cub of the species which in turn will now become references for many of our future depictions and also cartoon movies.